Hello, welcome back to another exciting episode. Today, we're gonna to try to do some beet fermentation. So we're gonna ferment some beets, and this is the first time I'm doing it with this recipe, so we'll see how it goes. Now on this beet fermentation recipe, uh, what you're going to need is, of course, some salt, at least to get started. Um, you can use the kosher salts, or what I like to use is the like Himalayan pink crystal salts. I know it sounds strange, but I think it has a little better flavor. Of course, we need our beets. Um, this particular recipe that I'm going to try uh, has to do with some ginger although I was told a shortcut I might use later and explain. And, of course, an orange to get the zest out of. Well, as I was getting things set up, the orange looked really good, so I ate it. But I saved a peel so we can get uh, some zest. Of course, you need a peeler to peel uh, the skins of the beets. Now, I have seen some recipes and read some recipes that says you can keep the skin on. And I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm not brave enough to try that yet, um, especially with a new recipe. So I'm going to peel the skins off, of course, with this um, vegetable peeler. Now, I just got that vegetable peeler, so we're going to see how that works. And, of course, I do have a microplane to help get some of the orange zest off here. And also, um, if I'm going to use that... Um, that bit there, I'm going to go ahead and microplane some of that as well. But I do have uh, something else I was told is a shortcut I might use, but since it's a new recipe, I'm not 100% sure. So, oh, I don't think I said what that was. That's ginger. And that's about it. And of course, obviously you need some water because you're going to put the salt in there and mix it up. And what I do, I put a, like a little plastic cap on. And I don't see it right now. I'm not sure where I put it, but I'll find it. So I usually put a little plastic cap on um, when I put the salt in there and shake it up. Because some of the salt goes in there, and some of the salt, when I slice the beets up, um, I put in there. But I'll explain that as we go. So let's get making or fermentating. Is that a word, fermentating? Fermentation? Whatever. Okay, here we are. We're getting ready to peel the beets. Now, again, we do have a vegetable peeler here. Take the guard off. There we go. Now, with the cutting board that I have, I do have some paper on it. I mean, it's a white cutting board, so I do want to protect it a little bit, even though it's an older one. Um, actually, it's parchment paper. Now everything that I'm using today, um, I'm going to try to do a shortcut down below so you can find those, those products or items if you don't already have them um, through Amazon. Kind of figure that's the easiest way to do it. Um, kind of really short and low here. Kind of small. We represent the Lollipop Guild, the Lollipop Guild. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so we have the beats. We're gonna go ahead and peel all the beets, and then we'll go step by step. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment, ask the questions down below in the comment section. Um, if you're seeing this on YouTube, um, through a computer or some sort of a handheld device, you should be able to comment. If you're on like a smart TV or you're on like a Roku or something like that, um, if you have a comment, you may have to go to a computer um, find the video and then comment below. But either way, I will try to answer any questions that you do have, or if anybody else has the answer, um, please feel free to chime in. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's see how this new peeler works here. We go ahead, peel that around. Whoa, now I know why the thing had the guard on it. It is very, very sharp. Um, 
almost to the point I'm getting kind of nervous pushing it too much. But, yep, it definitely works well. Um, I don't even remember my old one being as sharp at the beginning. So, yeah, I think this was a good buy. Again, um, if you're interested, I do have a link down below for the uh, products and such. So, again, take a look down below if you're interested. I'm going to go ahead and finish peeling this off. <laughs> nice pink fingers. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and peel everything else. Um, get down to the point where I'm going to be slicing them, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I just want to do a quick shot here. Um, we peeled all the beets here. And, of course, here's the beet skins. Now, since these are organic beets, um, go ahead and put them in your compost uh, if you wish to do so. In fact, I suggest you do that if you do a compost composting. And, oh, uh, with these beets. Now, these are not my beets out of my garden uh, right now because mine aren't ready yet. But I got these from an organic CSA that we belong to. If you don't know what a CSA is, um, there is a video that I did in the past. Um, if I remember, I'll put a link below in the description um, on the Yahoo page. And you can kind of see what a CSA is. But this is from our CSA here. And again, it is organic, so please go ahead and, and compost um, if you wish to do so, especially if it's organic. Okay, now on this next step, now obviously I didn't show the knife before because um, you can use, I believe it's called a mandolin that has the V-shape um, uh, blades in them and you kind of just rub it up and down, you know, rub it up and down the, the guard and it makes really, really super thin uh, slices. But I don't have a mandolin, so I use a knife. And you can do that because you don't have to be exact. Um, all you do is go ahead and start cutting. Now again, these are not cooked beets. These are fresh beets, so they are a little hard um, and a little difficult to cut as well. Let's see if I don't, I'll try not to cut myself here because I'm looking into the camera viewfinder. I have a camera that the viewfinder flips up. So I'm looking in the viewfinder trying to make sure that I'm staying in the shot and it stays focused. So hopefully I don't cut myself. Um, if I do with all the red you're not going to tell the difference anyway. So I guess what I'm going to do here go ahead and cut all these up into these uh, again nice thin slices and then we'll be right back. Okay, as you see here, we got all the beets cut, and we have a bowl. You can use a plastic bowl, you can use a wooden bowl. Um, for beets especially, I like to use metal because it's easier to clean. And of course, you're going to need some salt. I have about a tablespoon of salt right there. Um, that's all ground up. I like to use this grinder here. Whoops, where's that? There it is. So I use just a little hand grinder, that's it. Um, Got a little bit of a little bit of beet juice on there. I'll take care of that later before the wife gets home. Um, let's see. This is a. I'm not sure. It looks like unicorn. Yeah. So it's a unicorn brand. And all you do. That <laughs> won't do it. There we go. Um, it just kind of slides open. You put your salt in there, right in there, and then you close it back up, and then you just start grinding until you get what you need. All right, so with the beets, all you do for the first step, you just kind of put all your beets in the bowl. Just like so. And spread them out a little bit. Get a 
move this off to the side, glue this in so it's a little more into the shot. And then all I do is the salt, the one tablespoon of salt. I go ahead, just put that right on in there. And then all you do, you can put gloves on for this if you want. Just go ahead and you mix it up. Just mix, mix, mix. Kind of massage it just a little bit. What you're doing, you're just kind of putting the salt. Try to get at least a little bit of salt on each piece. You're not going to get a, some salt on each piece, but try to. In other words, separate it up as much as you can. Because what's going to happen is those salts are going to break down the membrane. It's going to make a, like a beet juice. Now your hands are going to get nice and red. Um, a cool little trick that I found that's really fun to do is if your wife comes home um, after you make, made uh, some beet whatever and your hands are still red, and she says, what the heck were you doing? Just tell her I was playing in your makeup kit and just watch her freak out. That's really fun. But anyhow, go ahead and mix that up. Then what you want to do is you want to take an old rag or an old dish towel, something, lay it over top, and then come back in about an hour to two hours, and those salts should uh, break things down. And I'll see you in about an hour or two. Okay, it's been about an hour. Let's do the reveal here. Oh yeah. You can kind of see how it looks like it's really moist and wet in there. That's exactly what you want. Yep. In fact, if you go all the way down to the bottom, if you can see that. Anyway, there's juice on the bottom. That's exactly what you want to see. That's fantastic. So everything's working the way it's supposed to so far. And now, what we got to do, go ahead and rinse that off a little bit. All right. Now, we have a mason jar. We have another mason jar. This is what I like to do. Fill it about halfway up with water. Um, now, the water makes sure there is no chlorine in there because otherwise the good bacteria that you want to propagate is going to propagate because the chlorine is going to kill it. If you have tap water, what you do is before you start the process, go ahead and fill the water up about halfway on this and by the time you're ready to use it, then the chlorine should have dissipated. Or if you're in a hurry, just go to the store and get some bottled water. Um, but again, read the contents to make sure that there's no chlorine or chloride or something like that in there. Now here's our ginger and our zest. Well, orange peel that we're going to make into a zest. And what you do is the bottle, of course, that does not have the water in. You can go ahead and take your microplane go over top and go ahead and put some ginger in there. Also the same thing with the orange peel. Just go ahead and just go across it. Doesn't have to be a lot. Yep, looks good. Alrighty, so scrape some of that off in there too. Da, da, da. Of course you can put some gloves on. I washed my hands really good before we started. Now remember where I, now if you notice I didn't actually put any ginger in there because this is something that I saw on YouTube. Um, and of course we know everything on the internet's true. So hopefully this is. Um, if you get some ginger kombucha, or kombucha, kombucha, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. But if you get this stuff, um, this is a um, store brand. Now the neat thing is, um, go ahead and shake it up really well before you open it. I'm kidding. 
do not shake it up before you open it um, because it is under pressure Ooh. as you see because it does have some active active enzymes in there and fermentation so instead of putting just a little bit of and really that's all they said was a little bit of ginger in or you can use a tablespoon of the uh, kombucha and make sure there's no additives in there like this itself has organic um, kombucha which is spring water um, and organic black tea and small traces of organic cane sugar so and of course the organic ginger root so let's give this a shot that's a tablespoon put that in the bottom close that back up because I will spill it if I don't then all you do is you go ahead and you start packing the beets go ahead and get them in there really good and just keep packing until you have it up as high as you need it now in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and pack that off camera but in the meantime what you want to do is go ahead and put about a half tablespoon to one tablespoon of salt in your water I happen to have done this so many times I kind of know what it is by eyesight but it's about again half tablespoon to a tablespoon depending on your liking then I take that plastic cap that I was talking about put it on there now again this is non chlorinated water shake it up set it off to the side all right and then as that starts to dissolve in there we'll go ahead and finish packing this and we'll be right back with you okay here we are at the end now obviously you can probably have seen at the beginning when I had all those beets it was probably going to take more than one I was just going to show you how to do one but I realized um, most of the time you're going to have enough beets to have two anyway so I split them up even um, the juice that came out while you were um, putting the solder in there and letting it sit just go ahead and put that right back in there there we go then the only other thing you do go ahead and take that water that you had put salt in it should be dissolved by now go ahead and just fill that up even that out Oops. there we go now there's two type of fermentation lids that I use the one type is like this um, it has a water sealer right here you put a little bit of water in there put a cap on and that's kind of like a little burper um, if you're using um, like cabbage things like that that have a lot of uh, fermentation that goes on so I like to use that type with this and you can use it with this as well there's nothing wrong with that um, in fact those type are called at least the type the brand that I got is go ferment um, it's a fermentation set and again I'll put uh, this down in the description on the YouTube channel if I remember and the other type that I like to use um, especially for this type of stuff is the easy fermenter lid as you see here now what makes these better in my opinion for this type of stuff is you don't have to fill the water all the way up on the other type you have to fill the water up uh, about a half inch from the bottom these you don't because let's see if I can get these out here 
because what you do, and these are washed, I just kind of put them in here so I can show you the box, but um, these just kind of strip right on like this. And the cool thing is, you might not be able to see this on a camera, but there are numbers right there that you can go ahead and use a little wheel, a little marker, to put it on the day of the month. It has 31 numbers on it. So you can put on the day of the month that you started the fermentation. So um, you don't have to mark the jar. You can just kind of remember, hey, I started this on, I would say, the 9th. And then in a week or two, when the beets should be done fermenting, you can say, oh, yeah, it's uh, two months, it's here, two months, two weeks um, from the 9th. They should be ready. Now, the reason why on these you don't have to fill up all the way to the top is this type has this air um, extractor. So, see if you can see it here. Can you see there's a big gap between the fluid and the top of the lid? Well, if you put this on, you have to make a nice seal. suck all the air out. It takes a little while. But you can start seeing the bubbles come out and the air come out. And now you have a super seal right there. Now the bad part about these uh, lids is when you go to take them off you're probably going to have to have um, some pretty good strength to pull these off because now you just put them under pressure and it's not going to be the easiest thing. Um, oh, no, oh, well, it's still good. Um, one of the other things that I normally do to cheat a little bit is I kind of push up and down like this under the water um, to try to get some of the big air bubbles out. There you go. And if you don't have, this is my hand, I'll say a little bit, but if you don't have these types of lids, um, if you just have the other type that I showed you, one of the tricks that we use to keep the beets under the fluid are these pickle pebbles. In fact, I'll put one in now just to show you, because I did clean these off um, earlier. Again, I kind of set them back in there lightly. So, uh, so that's something to show you. But really all these are, they're just glass weights. Kind of put the glass weight right in there. Boom. And that's it. Then you go ahead and put the other lid on. If I can find it. There it is. Let's put the other lid on. Again, take the air out. Again, you should see some air bubbles come out, which we're seeing a lot, even though I push that thing around. There you go. And you'll see the level of the fluid come up as well. So that makes a nice seal. All right. That's it. Um, we'll check back in about two weeks and see if this particular recipe works. Oop. One thing I neglected to say, and I apologize, is what I normally do is I get a bowl and I put whatever I'm fermenting into the bowl. That way, um, as the fermentation process takes place, a lot of times you'll see um, it kind of overflow a little bit. You'll see bubbles and it'll overflow. Well, this helps to catch it so it doesn't get on the counter. Um, keep this in a, again, a warm place. Um, doesn't have to be hot. Uh, the, where I put it in my kitchen is in between the stove and the refrigerator. That seems to be the, the warmest spot. So room temperature, it doesn't have to be hot, but um, 
don't make it cold because you want the fermentation process to take place and the good bacteria of course need some warmth to activate and to get things going. Um, when you want it to stop fermenting, like after the week or two, then you put it in the refrigerator and that coldness again will stop the fermentation process. So again, uh, in about a week or two, we'll come back, we'll taste it, and see how the recipe worked. Okay, this is a day three update. Just so you're aware, this is another reason why I put this in a bowl. Because sometimes the fermentation, like I said before, gets a little overactive and it starts to overflow. So this is what happens. Um, again, be prepared because if this beet juice was on the counter, it could be a bit of a mess. So again, that's why I put it on a bowl. Some people just put it on a, um, like a paper towel or something. I, again, like to use a bowl just because of this purpose. But again, if you see this bubbling over, you see those little bubbles on there, that means that's active fermentation. That is exactly what you want to see. So that's fantastic. And on the other one, pull this one over. This one is just starting. You can see the bubbles coming up. Again, active fermentation. That is exactly what you want to see. So, so far, so good. Day number three. Put those back in the warm spot. And then we'll be back in about another week or so to see how they taste. Okay, it's been approximately two weeks now for fermentation. So let's see what we got here. Okay. Uh, looks like we need a manly man to do this. Luann, can you help me? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. All right. Once you break the seal, it's easy to come off, but it, sometimes breaking that seal is not easy. Ugh. All right. So we're going to take, this is the one with the weight in it. We're going to take that weight out. Ooh. Gonna get a beat. Come on, let me switch this. Put this. Let's give this thing a try. Okay, I can tell the consistency is a bit more firmer than a canned beet, because a canned beet's cooked. These are not cooked. Though they're not tough, they're just tougher. You can definitely taste the beets. Um, slightly sweet. I guess that's from the, uh, the stuff that we put in there. It's definitely a, a tougher consistency than that of a canned beet. Because um, again, it's not cooked. Hmm. I don't know what else I can say about it. It, it actually has a, a pretty nice aftertaste. So I think it worked quite well. Now as far as the um, kabucha, kabuchi, kabucha, I am not 100% sure if that helped to speed up the process. Um, I will have to say I did have to empty the, uh, the cap a few times because where the seal is it did 
overflow a little bit, actually quite a lot, um, which is more than what I'm used to. So maybe it had something to do with that, or I just had it at the right place. You know, um, so the fermentation did a lot better job. I'm not 100% sure. So either way, the kombucha didn't hurt. So if you want to use the kombucha, have at it, feel free. At least we know it doesn't hurt the process. Um, in fact, it might even help a little bit like uh, other things on the internet have said. So that's about it. That's uh, fermentation of beets. I hope this was educational for you. I do suggest and request that you do um, subscribe below. We do like, again, to see those numbers go up. So I appreciate it if you do that. And also, um, as a reminder, if you could please at least check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash, slash WrestlerMania, I'd appreciate it. And as always, have a great day.